Yes, here we are, Phil, a little bit later tonight. Uh, yes, but uh, good to be here, and we have two hours to spend with you. We'll have twice the fun mm. in half the time. Now, what do we do? Uh, phantom races, do we, for the Melbourne Cup? Yeah, I think we will, and then at the end we'll have that tribute to Farlap that we play every oh, year. Oh, yes. That's, uh, which you're a part of, you're mm. on that as well. Yeah, uh, and, and maybe tips for tomorrow as yeah. well. Anyone come to town for the Melbourne Cup parade? I'd love to have known. Because a team raining this morning, didn't it? Yeah, how disappointing was that? Yeah, yeah, but it didn't discourage people, did it? They no. still turned up in their droves. Well, about three or four deep around the old... Uh, uh, tr around the uh, fences. We love a parade, don't we? Try and stop us. Whether it's Grand Final Eve or Anzac Day or Moomba, we love a parade. Now, I, uh, Peter Hitchener had an interesting story tonight about people getting rid of that quarter-acre block oh, they have yes. uh, in favour of perhaps building on a rumpus room or putting up a high-rise apartment. I'd love to hear from people who are hanging on to their precious back garden, as I am. Uh, it's so important to me to have that space. But you could build on. You could have You could have flats and apartments there. You could really capitalise on that. I could, but why would I want to? On that block of land? I don't need the rent. I don't need the money. Oh, it would be nice to live in absolute luxury, ne never having to come in here. But but where's Oro going to play if I, if I oh. build in the backyard? Does that matter? Where's he going to... Uh... Go to the bathroom. But this is what people are doing, aren't they? They're looking at land. It's more important than, 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 than buildings, than uh, houses. Absolutely. And homes my age, and mine was built in the 1930s, they're fast disappearing, aren't they, well, even in my street? In the old days, what was it? It was the quarter-acre block, wasn't it? That's what it is. That's most of us have a suburban quarter-acre, yes, with a, a smaller garden at the front. And a lot of space at the back. And then out into the rural areas, it'll be about an acre, wouldn't it? Oh, or yes. half an acre. I have friends who have five acres at Mount Macedon and Eden Park. Yeah. And that's not far out of town. It's only an hour or so out of town. Well, that's right, yes. On freeways <laughs> and uh, you're there in five minutes. Yeah, but don't take away my hammock. I need those two gum trees to swing in the trees. Yeah, but I'm afraid you're living in a fool's paradise. You're living in uh, in what will be, uh, you know, uh, obscure in a few years' time. Well, I hope not. And when I pass my home on eventually to, to who? family or loved ones, oh, you won't. I hope they're not going to bulldoze the joint. Of course they and will. put flats up. Oh, uh, no, of course they will. I'll come back to haunt them. Hmm? And I have dogs buried in the back garden. And oh, birds please. And... I'm sorry. It's you don't mind. like a pet cemetery at my place hmm. with the little plaques from Cameo Memorials. And, uh, and I've got a gazebo out there, you know yeah, that. Yeah. What do you mean? A bit selfish. Uh, why? It's, it's my property. But what are you, how are you using it? Well, I go and sit in the gazebo oh, sometimes yeah, and, right. and read the paper. Oh. You know, I've got a couple of tool sheds down there for wheelbarrows and there. That's where my clothesline is. Oh, don't take away my space, Bruce. And then incinerator, which I can't use anymore. Well, that's that's <laughs> part of the course, isn't it? Well, I've turned it into a barbecue. But anyway, what do we think about the quarter acre block? What do we think about the mm. gardens? What do we think about the imposition of taking that property, that land? Yes. Now, I remember a member of your family sacrificed some of their back garden for a very large rumpus room, didn't they? Because I've been to visit them. I don't know about that. Yes, one of your three children had built on a huge rumpus room at the back. Which, I don't know. Which would have, well, I, think, I don't know well, about that. I, I haven't yeah. heard about this. Well, you've got a short memory. They've sacrificed their garden in front of more space, in favour of yeah, more space. Yeah, a lot space. of people are doing that. A lot of people are decking their back gardens. Yes. A lot of people are putting in uh, uh, rumpus rooms, as you know. They're putting in kitchens. It's a big thing to have a barbecue kitchen at, yes. in, in, a, in a garden. And I know a lot of people, Bruce, who are filling in their pools. They say we don't get enough. Use out of them in the summer. We only have a few hot days. Well, everyone's saying it's it's the hottest uh, October, November ever on record. It's yeah. never been colder. That's right. Look, I've got a oh, single on and yeah. a warm shirt. And a no jacket. more dames and knights. What do we think about that? Uh, of course, having a knighthood and a dame mm. and a, it was uh, the, the top echelon, wasn't it? Yes. In the old days. A bit old hat now, I think. Oh, I suppose. You know, a bit. Going back to King Arthur and Camelot a bit, isn't it, I Bruce? I suppose that is a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. My job wouldn't knock one back myself, would you? Oh, no. Would you like to be Sir oh, Bruce Mansfield? Oh, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Huh? We'd have to kowtow to you. Oh, you wouldn't. Treat no, you, you wouldn't. Treat you with a bit of respect. No, just lift the train, just lift the <laughs> ermine and help me to my throne. Uh, yes, and oh, you're... you're, you're uh, 
crown is askew. OK, uh, Freely Wangaratta, 2QN Vidiliquin, welcome to the program. They're part of uh, Nightline as they are every night. Yeah, and all those tuned to us are watching us around the world on the internet. Now, Rob in St Kilda has called us. G'day, Rob. Hi, Rob. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Yes, You're good. Welcome. Oh, I'm just ringing about the, uh, the so-called empty nesters in their backyards. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd be, I'd be willing to move. I've, my, my children have all gone. I've got a big four-bedroom house in St Kilda and plenty of space. The big problem is, if I go and get a smaller place, I'm going to start paying out millions and hundreds of dollars in, or thousands of dollars in stamp duty to the government. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes. So if, if they made this stamp duty free, a lot of people would be moving out of the, the homes they've been in 40, 50 years. Yeah, I think you're right, Rob. No doubt yeah. about it. You're that's damned true. if you do and you're damned if you don't. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm staying here. <laughs> yeah, it's a vicious circle. Uh, well, what use do you have for the for the land? Do you uh, have you built on or? Yes, I've got my my little mini. I've rest fully restored, and I've got a garage, and I've got barbecues. And oh, that. good. Lovely. Yeah, good on you. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. All right, Rob. Thanks for your comments. Okay. Thank okay, you. Bye. Take, take thank care. you, Rob. Thanks for calling in, and uh, and uh, Brad's done the same in Altona, Phil. Hi, Brad. Hey guys, how are you? Good day. When are we going to be able to live our own lives without people telling us how we how we should live it? <laughs> That's right. Hey, <laughs> what next? <laughs> well, you know, forced to sacrifice your back garden if you don't want to. Yeah, but as you said, you've got a dog, you've got grandkids. Well, who comes up with all these theories? Well, have you hung on to your back garden? Certainly have. Well, no one's going to force you to get rid of it. Yeah, well, if it's your property, tell them go away. That's it. Yeah, I don't plan to make any changes. Okay, Brad. Yeah, thank you very much for calling in. I appreciate mm. the call. Yes, nobody is saying they're not holding a gun to your head and saying you know, no. we want you to sell. You've got to sell. Get rid of that uh, land mm -hmm. because that isn't happening. No, but it's uh, the truth. The back gardens are disappearing, and nurseries will suffer too, won't they? Oh well, with plants and of course. Yes, if people don't have the space for their lawns and their rockeries and and their exotic plants. Uh, the nurseries will be the first to, to What about suffer. the gardeners? What about all those, uh, right. you know, tilling the soil and yes, exactly. getting the weeds out and yeah. doing the mowing? Yeah. Mind you, I don't think it'll change much in our lifetime, but probably a hundred years from now, a quarter-acre block will be a, a rarity, won't it? I mean, look how they live in Hong Kong and uh, Asia. And oh, well, it's, it's, all it's, high it's, 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 it's apartments, isn't it? It's, yes. it's little boxes. Yeah, right through China and most of Asia. Mm. It's all high-rise yeah, living, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and in the CBD too, of course, around yeah. Docklands and uh, and uh, oh, yes. the South Bank, That's of right. course. Caught up on Boom. Channel Nine. It's Peter Hitchener peering into his. Uh, oh, oh, I'll what put is it this? away. Oh, it's an iPad Mini, and I'll put what it away. What do you away. do? Are you looking for messages? Well, yes, they seem to come through all the time. Uh, you, we got a lot of messages tonight. Speaking of that, about that topic you were discussing before, we ran a story in the news tonight about this this report that you know older people like us, yes. are being slightly naughty staying on in our houses. And there were a lot of people saying, well, we have every right to. What are they saying? Well, they were saying... Move on to an apartment? Well, no, that, that was what the report, you know, it's an official report, not one that was generated by us. We were just talking to a, a lady, a lovely lady, yes, who's staying was, in... Wasn't she lovely? She was gorgeous yes, lives and in, very it, comfortable. A, exactly, a beautiful house in East Bentley with a lovely big garden. And she says, well, it's, I've got all the memories here, I'm staying here. And I thought, I thought, I'm with you, <laughs> I'm yeah. with you, mm. and uh, good on her. And, uh, but there were a lot of people on social media saying... Saying, well, agreeing with us, saying, look, this is, you know, people should stay wherever they like. And there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of moves to keep people at home for as long as possible. Yes. Rather than, than having to, you know, to, I mean, of course, it's wonderful that there are some retirement villages and all sorts of facilities available for people, but a lot of people want to stay at home. And if that's the case, I think they should. So that did actually provoke quite a controversy on, online. And I think people thought, may have thought that we were the ones oh, who came okay. up with oh, the yeah. report. But no, it was actually, it was actually delivered by your statisticians. Mm. And you see, boys, I have the room to put in a granny flat if I choose yes. and invite, say, Jill or Edna to move in That'd be later lovely. in life. Now, that is actually a very good idea because, mm. uh, you know, later on in life, it, it would be lovely to have company and to have somebody there with you and keep an eye on you and help mm. you with the washing and things. I agree. And the thing is, 
people and and oh, another point that this lady made was well if i sell it's not going to be turned into it's not going to be bought by a young couple with their family for, for them to enjoy the garden it's going to be turned into flats mm. and nobody mm. will get to enjoy the garden and i thought well that's a very yeah. good point too so it's it's one of those uh, one of those arguments that really created quite a storm tonight and quite a quite a response from people and i thought mm. it was very interesting and they mostly agreed with us i think you're right mm. i see you only have Virgil, like you know have Edna, Doing your washing and ironing. And oh, that was the plan. Well, Jill's yeah, a lot younger than I am, <laughs> and I thought, you know, somebody to wash the car, polish oh. my shoes, oh. cook yeah, my meals, yeah, do the, the hassle. Yeah, hang on, what's the plus <laughs> sign? What, 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 are you, what, what are you offering? Buddy, the plus sign is they live there rent free. Oh, rubbish. Absolutely. The whip. <laughs> no, and I'll, I'll pay for provisions, and all I have to do is take care of me. Oh, what, you, uh, <laughs> so, housekeeping comes from you? Oh, uh, yes, but. As I get older and I start to dribble in my dotage oh, or whatever, oh, oh, oh. I need someone to take care of so me. So Jill comes and says, no. I'd like a couple of hundred. I want to go down to Q <laughs> to get the provisions from Safeway. Where's the money? Well, no, Jill, I'll hang on to the money. Let me oh. do the shopping. <laughs> I know where the Red Spot specials are. Yeah, well, so I'll do the shopping up and. Here, up oh. go the apartments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't blame Jill if she I said, don't blame no, her. you can keep it. I'm out of here. Oh, stick it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just and, a thought. And, and you're <laughs> your description of when you get into your dotage and start to dribble yeah. at the oh, oh, no. Are you, you trying to drive the poor woman away before, Excuse me, I'm before just, she even moves in? I'm just planning for my future. Oh, so Philip. I don't need to go into age care. Oh, Philip, I think you should train that puppy dog to look <laughs> after you, actually. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> when he stops biting your hands. I, well, which well, I see, actually. actually oh, yes. they're, they're pretty good no, now. No, it's on their best behavior. Yeah. Peter, quite a big uh, audience for the parade today. Yes, for, uh, wasn't it good? Yeah, wasn't it terrific? In Clement, and, oh yes, when I went outdoors this morning, I thought, "Gosh, I don't think this looks good for the parade." Mm. Didn't matter. No. Of course, that's the great thing about our city: people turn out and they go do. to things. They attend everything, they do. whatever the weather. Well, we're used to it. If you, mm. you know, the footy. How many times have you been to the to the footy and got drenched? But it didn't matter because no. you're there and you're there to see the game. And it's the same with everything. And I thought it was lovely today. And they paid tribute to Bart Cummings and mm -hmm. and the other trainers and jockeys were there giving their ideas and their yeah. opinions and their tips. And I know nothing whatever about racing but I must say I got caught up in it all and thought this is terrific yes. and this is you know Melbourne at its best. Oh by the way I don't know the answer you might. Oh. Did Bart Cummings horse qualify for tomorrow's cup? Oh, I wish you wouldn't ask me. But see, that's the thing. I, as I said, I know nothing about races, Philip. I can't help it, mate. I think it had to do well in the derby last Saturday to, to get a run tomorrow. Oh, dear. Don't you love Gay Waterhouse? Oh, she is Isn't wonderful. She a breath of fresh air? She is absolutely wonderful. I love her. And so do, so do the sports reporters. Tony Jones, a big fan of Gay mm. Waterhouse because she's terrific and she's funny yes. and uh, entertaining. And the other day she was wearing a cowboy hat. And I think it was Tony or one of our reporters said to her, oh, and I see, see you've got the cowboy hat on. And she took it off and said, yes, because look at my hair. It would look terrible this morning. And I thought ah, this is the best way of covering ah. it. And she just did it with such humour and such um, just a spur of the moment. Exactly. It was lovely. No, and, it was. you know, she's very, very good, yeah. very good advertisement. I, I reckon for racing, she's a and, real plus for the, for and, the industry. And terrific with the media. Fabulous. Yes, Now, yes. I'm tr I was trying to think last night, was she once a performer in the media in her own right as an actor or as a as a broadcaster or something, I have a suspicion that she might have she been. She may have been. I don't. Well, I'm know. not sure. I, I should have checked before even bringing it, the topic up. But it uh, was her father, wasn't it, that uh, that spearheaded the the training? Yes, uh, that's that right. was, And was his name Ron Rogers or no, you talking about no, 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 Tommy Smith? Waterhouse. No, okay. A husband's. Well, he's Ron Rogers when he's home. <laughs> oh well, I thought. <laughs> right. What was that? <laughs> Somebody. No, 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 he worked out of ten. No, Division no, four, wasn't not, he? Not Roy Rogers. Ron Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he might be her uncle. Well, look, never let the facts get in the way of a good no. story around <laughs> here. It's too much fun. <laughs> now, look, have a lovely cup day tomorrow, you two. Yes. It's fantastic talking Do to you. Do you go out there to no. the birdcage? Oh, no. No, I've, I'm, I'm at work doing Logie Award deserving news breaks, good and that's you. where I'll stay. I've been out there before, and if there's one thing, I mean, I love it, and, and, and it's lovely for everybody, but. Mm. Oh my goodness me, it's quite an ordeal. It's quite an outing, isn't it? Just you, getting there. Just getting there and then getting home. It's, oh my goodness me. But people, of course, oh. love it and they go there in their tens of thousands. Yes. Hundreds of thousands. Bruce and I are very sad tonight for you that you will never become Sir Peter Hitchener. <gasps>
Oh, well, I never was going to anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't worry me in the slightest. But... There haven't been many nights in uh, the media, have there? No. No, not too many, no. No, and I think the ones... Let me think. Sir I, David I think... Frost. Oh, Sir David Frost. I met him when he was out here. Yes. Uh -huh. um, in the 70s, it must have been around the time before the, the Richard Nixon... Um, oh, interviews. the interviews, yes. yes. He, uh, he was here doing some, some work for Nine, and we had to do... Um, uh, we ha I had to do some publicity photographs with David Frost, and I thought how strange it was because he'd never met me before, but he grabbed me by the arm and he went, ha, 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 and I thought, well, what's the matter with him? Yes. And he said, oh, that's just for the photograph. It, it looks like we're having fun. Oh, dear. And I thought, oh, there oh, you go. Oh, <laughs> cool. oh, uh, Bruce, my favourite David Frost story, yes. I met him on the Mike Wall Show years, oh, yes. years and years and years yes, ago. Yes, it would have been the same time. And probably. then two years later... We crossed paths in the studios at Channel 9 in the corridor. Don't tell me he remembered and you. And he said, hello, Philip, how are you? Oh, Two years heavens. later. That is he must so have good. had a photographic memory, that man. He must have. Or I must have made a good impression. Well, I think he thought it was Philip Noyce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Pete, very good much. Good day. It's so funny. Have a good day tomorrow. It's half past ten. This is Nightline Byron's at Mentone, Phil. Hello, Byron. Oh, uh, good evening, chaps. Uh, how are you? Good. Fine, thank you. That's good. Um, I turned on the radio and I heard that you mentioned about you mentioned about uh, the the large backyard and uh, yeah. uh, that prompt. And then I think uh, Phil mentioned that. Uh, um, what do you mention about? Um, what am I trying to say? Um, the no one's forcing you to uh, sell the backyard. Well, um, I believe that the council and uh, the flow-on effect to the board of works, and by the time you put them together. Uh, particularly the council rates, uh, driving people out of their uh, quarter acre, uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of their um, large uh, properties, because the council gets, uh, when they uh, go and build flats and townhouses and uh, that, the, the, the council gets more money uh, once they come subdivided. Well, that's very true. Yes, uh, three or four properties on that same mm -hmm. land can bring it can be quite a uh, it can be uh, quite a fortune. And, uh, and uh, I just, uh, that's why I was ringing, uh, well, I thought, uh, that's why I was ringing up for, and uh, I want to raise that, and I mm -hmm. think the government should do something, of, uh, any um, incentive to keep the quarter acre blocked mm -hmm. and uh, slash the uh, the rates, because it's driving people out, out of their uh, mm -hmm. uh, homes, particularly people that have got large blocks of land. Yeah, sure. Hey, oh, it's, it's so typically Australian, isn't it, to have that back garden? Oh, yeah. Yes, it, it's uh, it, it's wonderful, but I think it's every day it's getting harder and harder because of all these uh, service charges. Uh, yeah. I, I'd be interested to hear if there's any other calls, mm. uh, comments on. Yeah. Uh, yes, good point, Byron. Anyone like to uh, to add to Byron's mm -hmm. comments about the uh, exorbitant council rates which right. uh, keep those backyards going? Oh yes. What are your rates in the caravan no, park? I can't tell you. Oh. No. But they'd be high even being in a caravan park, would they? Oh, well, yes. They're uh, they're probably about twenty five dollars. Mm. Oh, you well. know, just for the caravan and the kiosk. A live read to pay the, for that. Uh, I beg your pardon. A live read to pay for that. Well, I'm not going to be doing that in a kiosk. But there's the ablution <laughs> block to look after, and there's uh, there's showers. I and, know. Uh, and recesses. Oh, there's no end to it, is there? Oh no. You got your hand in your pocket. A hand in your pocket all, all the, the time. time. I can't subdivide a caravan. No. Like, what can I do? I Put my art house up. I know. You paint it into a corner, Nice, Bruce. me pink. Mm. Alan's there. You're made at Coolaroo. Hello, Alan. Uh, how you going, Bruce and Phil? G'day. No, no way known would I divide my quarter acre. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with your nature strip. Yeah. We're supposed to look after that, where it is really the council's job to do that. Mm -hmm. So imagine if everybody put in, say, $20 for cutting the nature strip and billing the council. Yes. Yeah, 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 good point. Where does it begin and end, Phil? Well, the council are responsible when, uh, for when, the... Yes, when it becomes council property. Yeah, well, the council are responsible for the trees uh, on yeah. your nature strip, but, you know. Yeah, but not for mowing the nature strip. No, you have to do that yourself, obviously. Hmm. Yeah. Although, as you realise, you don't own that nature strip. It belongs to the council. Yeah. Uh, some people plant... Uh, 
the shrubs and things, which are a I, bit uh, of a hazard. Well, no, I quite like them. Yeah, but easy to trip over in the dark, aren't uh, they? Well, he's wandering around in the dark. Oh, people walking their dogs mm. or whatever. Mm. Mm. Good on you, Alan. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris uh, good evening. Hello, fellas. Yeah. Did you know 90% of the people I mix with on a fortnightly basis, sometimes it might only be 30 or 40, might be 200 some fortnights I catch up in Brunswick Street, Fitzroy and all mm. that. A lot of them don't support same-sex relationships or marriages. Mm -hmm. And in the last um, referendum on, uh, on the monarchy and the um, and, and republic, 62% of people voted in favour of the monarchy. Mm -hmm. So why do you, why do radio stations have so keep pushing this thing about going being a republic and same-sex relationship marriages? No one actually wants it. See, a lot of people won't ring up on Free RW and say about not supporting same-sex relationships and marriages, unlike myself, because they, they'll feel offended if someone gets up and says a slur to them on the air, and then they get identified, the people on the receiving end of that slur, they'll get identified as had something offensive said to them. I mean, it's just, it's just that you get a whole lot of people who are trying to push the issue, but it's not actually being supported, you know, above, you know, the, the, the medium, you know. And so it would appear at first thought that, oh, there's an 80% push for same-sex relationships mm. and marriages. Oh, let's have a referendum and vote it in. But yeah, look, how many more referendums do we want? Well, that's, that's yeah. right. It's uh, but, a referendum at yeah. the end, isn't it? Uh, but, Chris, you're blaming the media, and you're the one who's just brought it up yourself. Well, what I'm actually saying is, why do you keep pushing it when people don't support it? Well, we're not pushing any issues. Yeah, no, because it, it, it creates a lot of vibe, and, and people jam the switchboards the radio. That creates mm. ratings. That turn, creates turnover mm. and profits for Fairfax um, Media. And it doesn't need to do that. If you come up with constructive stories that right. are viable, fiscally viable to the Australian economy, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, we this country gets moved again. I mean, can yeah, I right. just... Finished by saying, you know, the Hume Council here, formerly known as the Broadmouth Council, they've built, rebuilt the whole major road and bus stops in front of the Hume Council offices, but they haven't done nothing else in the four years that they've been in term. So, you know, like, um, I, if I both finish by saying, Malcolm Turnbull won't get my vote, but we don't mind in Broadmouth paying for a lot of pain to get a lot of gain. Lift the GST up to 50%, as we support, but mm. we'll still vote Labor. And, and that will create $80 billion each year of uh, savings. We can build more major hospitals here, uh, one here in Broadmoors and one in, and another one or two in the other suburbs over the next 10 years. And then there won't be no longer 30,000 people waiting on hospital lists for surgery. That's about mm. it. Yes, that's the way it works out, doesn't yeah. it? All right, Chris, thanks for your point uh, of view. Let's have a look at the ratings from last night. The block uh, was number one. Did we watch the block on Network 9? Mm -hmm. Apparently uh, most of Australia did. At nine news, Sunday was number two, sevens news three. Not in necessarily this order. Sunday night was uh, a big winner, as was 60 Minutes, ABC News, then uh, Beach Cops, TBL Families, Family Feud, and uh, Quantico. OK, they're the top ten from last night. They are indeed. Now, let me just tell you that uh, a caller rang to say that Gay Waterhouse was a model in the mid-1970s. Oh, I, could, be uh, I could believe that. She yeah. was very stylish. A very attractive lady, and uh, and she mm -hmm. was a model in the seventies. I think later than that. That uh, that was forty years ago. No, I think well, it might have been later than that. She's not that old. All right. Well, thank you very much, Steve at Greenvale. Good evening. Good day, guys. Uh, my tips for t tomorrow. Oh, right. good. Uh, Red Cardone giving him another chance. He's come in second about two or three times in the last few years. Red Cardone. Uh, number nine. All oh, right. Um, he's a stayer. He'll figure. He might not do it, but he's a stayer. He'll be there. Uh, number 12, Sky Hunter. Um, good jockey on that one. And an outsider, number 23, Excess Knowledge. Karen McAvoy is a very good jockey. He's riding him. And, um, so that's my trifecta. So those three definitely okay, in the I've, mix. I've written them down. We'll check them out tomorrow night for you, Steve. No worries. Um, just on the backyard... I agree with every single caller that is, a, that is against it. I think it's pathetic. And I agree with that last caller that said um, the council will benefit. Of course the council will benefit. Um, that goes without a doubt. But um, the government will also benefit. Uh, we forget to mention things like capital gains tax and land tax, guys. Mm. Where, you know, the only people that are going to benefit from this is all levels of government. 
you know, forcing people... OK, they're not forcing it, but they're, they're making you do it eventually. I mean, of course we've grown up with the backyard. It's traditionally Australian, I understand that. And that should be preserved. I mean, that's just one of the few things that we enjoy. Anyone can do it. You don't have to be a king to have a big backyard. You know, even people on low incomes and in some of the poorer suburbs have got big backyards. But, yeah, it's just, it just makes me sick, guys, because the government, they can't manage the taxes that we do give them. And every time they, they blow it, they always find another way to, to make tax, to, to collect it. They're trying to increase the, the GST. That's going to affect a lot of people. It always seems to come down to, you know, who's got the most money and who can who will afford it and who can afford it and who can't afford it. I mean, I heard this garbage that, you know, poor people can't afford to buy fruit. Of course they can. They just don't buy a ton of it. But, you know, why do they always have to sort of increase taxes or find ways to collect new taxes when they blow the money that we do give them, Bruce? Yeah, that's, uh, that's just about it, too. And now with the GST looming, Phil. You're spot on, Steve, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling me, Steve. Good on you, uh, Steve. 19 to 11, 3 AW. Uh, We're talking about knighthoods. Uh, are you in favour of them being abolished? Uh, yes. Well, I think so, don't you? Oh, yes. A bit old hat now. I mean, the Melbourne Cup is, is a typical example of if you're a dame or a sir, that'd be fabulous to be strutting around with a top hat and tails and yeah. all the rest, but it really is okay. I think it came to a head when uh, Prince Philip was made a knight of oh, the realm, you know. How embarrassing was that? Ridiculous. For Absolutely us and, ridiculous. For us and for him. Let's talk about uh, backyards and what the mm. traditional backyard was when you were growing up. Yeah. And sadly, they aren't around for our kids and grandchildren today. It's big enough to kick a footy or play cricket. Yeah, but you'd, you'd, have, you'd have Christmas dinner and then you'd be out mm. in the backyard there. Uh, part of it would be cemented and you'd, yeah. you'd put the wickets up and... And play the cricket? Yes. And then in time, uh, a pool was uh, was uh, installed? Yes, even it was just a wading pool for the kids. But the old, uh, the old backyard, what did you have as a kid? It was the, mm. the chook run was there, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Some people had rabbits. Uh, a gully trap. I'm still got that. Think of the past. Mm. Uh, a fig tree and a pussy willow was always there, wasn't it? Yes, you're so right. And all the, uh, the uh, grubs in the trees when they, uh, they had the silkworms. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, uh, you yeah. used to collect those, did you, Bruce? Mm. Did you keep them as no. a child? No. Did you ever have a pet rock? No. I'm going for... What is the horse Paris? Is it... Uh, a trip to Paris? Is it a trip to Paris? Yeah, horse number 10. Everybody uh, seems to be uh, talking about Quite trip like to Paris. Quite like trip to Paris. OK, so that's your tip. We'll and what's check. yours? Mine is mm. Fame Game, and it's horse number three. Uh, a caller rang and says that Gay Waterhouse's dad was Tommy Smith. Mm hmm and Sir Eric Pierce was the media star who was knighted. Yes, yes we, uh, we, we uh, know that. And has respected. Michael Parkinson also been knighted? Yes. yes. I think so. Yes, Sir Mick Jagger. Yes. Sir David Attenborough, of yes. course. Yes. Oh, yes, there are many, when you stop to think. Not a lot. Oh, well, more than we Not give credit lot. to. Mm. Not many. Mm. You're waiting for Sir Bruce Mansfield. Oh, I just well, know it. Well, no lord or earl or yeah. count. Well, you won't, you won't be here uh, sorry more, but maybe you'll be in the Australia Day Honours on January 26th. Here's another Melbourne Cup uh, fact. Unlucky Shadow King made six attempts to win the Cup in seven years. Between 1929 and 1935, uh -huh. he came sixth, third, second, third, second and fourth and mm. never won it. Reminds me of the horse Drongo. You've heard mm. about Drongo? Do you know why we're called Drongos? Because it's it never a, won, did it? It, no, it, was a, it was an actual horse. Yes, an Australian race horse who always came last. Mm. Hence, you are a drongo, okay, Bruce. Okay, so it's 6 to 11, and in 2003, Claire Lindop became the first Australian female jockey to ride in a Melbourne Cup. Remember uh, Claire Lindop? Yes, I've forgotten all about her. That oh, was, do you? Uh, so that was, what, about uh, 12 years ago, yes. Well, not 2003. Yeah, 12 years ago. Wow. Uh, Nicholas at Caulfield. Hello, Nick. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, Claire Linda, I've met her actually at, uh, over at the uh, Adelaide race. She's a very attractive uh, young lady. Ah, very nice. Uh, yes. Yeah, very attractive. I mean, you know, for a jockey. I right. Mean, nothing, not that there's anything wrong with jockeys. Well, most jockeys a... aren't attractive, are they? Well, she's very attractive. Oh, good. Yeah, she is because she's a female, that's why. Well, no, it's not that, Philip. And I rang up last night about the Kong, you know, the uh, when my um, Rottweiler Brutus. Yeah. 
and uh, under the rose bushes. I actually found it. Oh, thing. thank heavens for that. Mm. Yeah, I did. And uh, there's things that happen in trees, and they're called New Zealand. New Zealand wins the uh, Rugby World Cup. Mm. A New Zealand horse will win the Melbourne Cup, and I think New Zealand will uh, beat us in the cricket. OK, so which uh, Kiwi so, horse are you going yeah, for? So what's the horse? Oh, I have no idea. I don't bet on uh, race horses. Mm. I, I have no... Yeah. no uh, I, I don't care. But the, mm. I think there's a, a thing there from uh, New Zealand that's called... Uh, whatever it's called. Uh, I think it'll win. Uh-huh. Well, well, we'll mark your words All right. and well, see that's if you're a, right. That's a good omen. A New Zealand winner. That's tomorrow. Hello again. This is John Dremus with the Passing Parade, the story of a king who was enslaved by a wicked, grasping woman. The king was Edward III of England. The woman was a wanton opportunist by the name of Alice Perrers. And I'll be back with the story of their assorted liaison after this message. Paper clothes once caused a rustle of interest towards the end of the 60s. And though a few brave souls turned up at the Melbourne Cup wrapped up in paper, the idea never really took off. But now, a new plastic fabricated paper called Tyrek may be the reason for its sudden comeback. Whatever the reason, people who visit the National Gallery during Moomba will be amazed by the exciting designs and intriguing versatility of this new paper clothing. And by persistent and crafty negotiations, Georges of Collins Street have managed to give the public a second chance to view these unusual yet captivating garments in Georges' own fashion environment. An exclusive showing of Raina Gawenda's range of illusions in paper designs will be held in George's Coffee Lounge on the third floor this Wednesday at 12 noon. Remember, this once only showing of Raina Gawenda's collection is at George's of Collins Street. The origin of Alice Perrers is doubtful, but most authorities agree she came from the Devonshire family of Colonel Richard Perrers. It was possibly her blandishing tongue that gained her admission to court circles. Once there, her success was immediate and complete. King Edward III was 58 years old when his queen, Philippa, died in the year 1370. He was, it would seem, particularly susceptible to the charm of a young woman who made him forget that he was lonely and old. And Alice Perez lost no time in turning his infatuation to good account. She soon had him completely under her thumb. Flaunting her royal power, she put herself above the law. When a case in which she was financially interested was heard, she insisted on sitting with the judge in Westminster Hall and telling him what verdict he should give. She also used her influence to secure a favorable decision for any litigant. It guaranteed a large proportion of the gains. There were no depths to which she would not stoop to feather her own nest. She even capitalized on the king's debt by going to his creditors and offering to take over the accounts for a cash settlement much lower than the original sum. She then presented the bills to the treasury in her own name and was paid in full. Although Edward gave her all his dead queen's jewels, Alice helped herself to handfuls of gems and trinkets from the royal treasury, most of which she pawned or sold. Her pirated hoard was poured into real estate. By 1375, she owned rows of houses in London. She kept four mansions for her own use and installed her two children by the king in a moated manor at Hammersmith. To furnish her houses, she plundered the royal wardrobe without conscience or restraint. And when it became apparent that Edward had not much longer to live, Alice Perrers entered into a miserable liaison with Sir William de Windsor, a well-born but seedy knight for whom she obtained the appointment of Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, where at her instigation he plunged into an orgy of rapacious excesses and extortions. While Edward was on his feet, he tried to check to Windsor, but he was too feeble to assert himself. The country's affairs went from bad to worse when John of Gaunt, Edward's disreputable brother, was appointed regent because of the king's illness. The tragic death of the failing monarch's favorite son, Edward, the Black Prince, sent him landsliding to senility and death. In his last hours, Alice Perrers stuck leech-like at his bedside. When he lapsed into a coma, she stole the priceless rings from his fingers and hastily departed. Though stripped of much of her ill-gotten gains after King Edward's death, Alice Perrers had salted away the enormous sum of 800,000 pounds. She lived on for another 17 years in her manor at Upminster, which she had been allowed to keep, and she died in 1396.
mourned by none. A prominent historian subsequently wrote of her as one of the world's most wicked women. It would be difficult to argue with that moniker. Our time is up till we meet again for another chapter of the Passing Parade. This is John DeRemus. As always, thank you so much. And goodbye for now. I'm going to a Melbourne Cup party. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow well, night. Where's that on? That's up in Eden Park, and uh, my special guest driving mm. with me in the passenger seat is Aura. Are you, uh, is, it a, is it a tent, or is it a marquee, or what is it? No, it'll be outdoors on a five-acre property in mm. Eden Park, the home of Trish Wildman, who... Uh, is uh, the breeder of Maddie and who runs Harry Cherub's dog wash. Uh, the old Harry Cherub. That'll be very much to the fore tomorrow. I yes, and, and we've all been invited to bring our pets. Oh, good. And oh, wear hats. He's, he's going to have a cute little bandana on. Okay, uh, Melbourne Cup facts. The most winning number has been number four and number 12 with 11 wins each. Okay. That may be an omen tomorrow. Oh. The most winning number, 4 and 12, with 11 wins each. Okay, made note of that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 4 tomorrow is our Ivanhoe, and 12 is a Sky Hunter. Okay, 3 and Wangarat is taking the program, along with the 2QN Daniloquin, and we're going down to Hastings. Chris is there for us. Hi, Chris. Hi, uh, Bruce. Hi, Phil. Hi, uh, uh, Phil. Uh, a quick caller, Phantom Call Booth. Oh, we'd love that. You're the first to do it. Uh, thank you. A uh, quick one. Around the turn, Criterion leaves the rails. Hoko Brave shot through and led Prince of Friends and Sky Hunters coming with Fame Game who hooks out with Big Orange. Fame Game at the furlong. Hartdell's flying. Excess knowledge, Hoko Brave battling and Big Orange. They come close to the line. Fame Game's holding Big Orange and Sky Hunter. Bondo Beach is left at too late, and it's fame game. Oh, yes, very good. Hey, that was my tip 20 minutes ago. Very good. Thank you, boys. Thanks, Thank Chris. you. Uh, he, he follows the, the horses quite a bit, does Chris? Yes, yeah, that was a good call, Chris. Thank you. Very, very good. A caller rang and says that in the UK, the council mows the nature strip. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Interesting, isn't it? Well, they do own it, after all, yeah. Oh, I suppose you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, Bernadette at Greensboro. Hello, Bernadette. Oh, hi. Um, I just want to know, this is an early radio solutions, but is um, John Dreams, is he still alive? Uh, no, sadly, he's been dead for many years now, probably oh. 15, 20 years. Oh, that's sad. Okay, all right, I want to say to you about the Melbourne Cup. I nursed a jockey who has ridden six Melbourne Cup winners. Six Melbourne Cup winners, and you nursed him. No, yeah, but he's not ridden them on Melbourne Cup Day. I see. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So when he retired, he and his wife went on a cruise, and the wife said, "Oh, you know, what, what about we go on? Um, you know, have a you know, is a spa or a sauna or whatever." He goes, "If I had a gun, I would have shot her." <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> but he said, he told me that he only ate one meal a week, the yeah. Thursday night. That was his only meal for the week. To keep the weight down, yeah? Yeah, yeah, to keep the weight down. And then, um, yeah, so he said, and then they went on this cruise, and the wife said, what about we go, you know, have a, um, yeah, go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, go and have a spa or so on it. Said, oh. I had a gun with <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that so interesting? Can... A, a cruising wasn't for him. If I go on a cruise, I'll get a gun. But, uh, now, I must tell you something interesting. Uh, the horse Doremus, who uh, on one occasion won the Melbourne Cup, was named after John Doremus. Oh, interesting. Yes, absolutely. Well, I didn't know that. Yes, in New Zealand, a fan of John Doremus named his racehorse after him. And that's a famous racehorse, isn't it? Absolutely. Doremus. He was, yeah. he, was, he was there in the. Uh, yeah, certainly won in a the in the hallowed halls. Yeah, very much so. Doremus. Twelve minutes past eleven. Uh, one of the uh, first jobs I had when I was at XY was to go down and interview Jack Pertell. Remember Jack oh, Pertell? yes, I do. Oh, yes. He was a marvellous, colourful character yeah. among all the colourful characters in the Melbourne Cup calendar. 
he often won by a nose, didn't uh, well, he? Well, he had a huge honk, didn't he? And, <laughs> yeah. and they said the, the, the horse won by a nose and so did Jack. Yes, a lovely man, wasn't a he? A lovely character. Yeah, and, 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 and racing is full of those characters, yeah. isn't it? And, and somebody else from the same era who appealed to me, Professor Roy Higgins. He was a beaut bloke too, if you remember him. Mm. There were some colourful characters at that time. But Jack was certainly one of them. There were some of the callers. Joe Brown, wasn't there? Jo Joe Brown used to call for the ABC. Yes, you're right. Um, was there a Joe Miller? The Joe Miller was a trainer, a, a, a lady trainer. Oh, OK. All right. And, of course, you think of... Well, you think of uh, Eric Welch of 3DB. Mm. You think of Bert Bryant. You think of Bill Collins. Mm. Ken Howard. London to a brick. Des Hoisted. Des Hoisted. Yes, you're right. Any others you've got there? Do you have any uh, famous race callers? This is interesting. Only horses to win in consecutive years, right? These are consecutive years. Yeah. Archer, 1861 and 1862. Yeah. Rain Lover, 1968 and 1969. Yeah. Think Big, 1974, 1975. Yeah. Maccabee Diva, 2003, 2004, 2005. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, and Farlap, of course, only won one year, 1930. Uh, I think came second a year later. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. interesting. Now we'll take your calls. Uh, we've got some nice prizes too, Phil. Uh, pancake parlor vouchers. We've got uh, uh, the ball and the football version of the toys for Kong. Oh, yes. These are the backyard toys for the dogs who are there mm. all day long. Mm. Uh, a two-in-one ball toy for twice the interactive fun. The uh, interior tennis ball and the loud squeak play and, uh, and uh, while well, the handles make a pick-up and it's shaking very easy for the dog. Yeah, or has been a different boy since he's had his Kong. These are the kongcompany.com.au and also a Hamper World Hamper, valued at $100 for Christmas. OK, back with Frank, Helen and Sahara in a moment. Nine six nine hundred six nine. Get those slingbacks out, get that fascinator ready, get that pillbox all shaped and, mm. and, and, and ready for the morning. And your accessories. Oh, a bit of fur on the collar. Matching shoes. You blokes with your tails. No, perhaps not. Perhaps a grey suit. And your bling. Mm. Eh? The bling? Oh, yeah, the women get out the bling, don't they? Yeah, my word, they do. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a great day. The, old high, the hails over the shoulder, about half past three. And, of course, you'll hear the race called on 3 mm. AW. I think it's really a radio event, don't you, Bruce? <laughs> you know, I'd, I don't know, I'd rather hear it and picture the horses yeah. and watch it. Hello, Channel 7. Mm. Uh, a low of nine degrees overnight, a bit of a cool morning, but Tuesday's weather partly cloudy and sunny breaks in the afternoon. Sounds Hoping good. Hoping it's right for the uh, the big day. Uh, a top of 22 degrees. All right. The oaks, rain and stormy. Sorry, girls. And possibly lightning and thunder. Mm. Mm, Frank at Strathmore Heights. Hello, Frank. Uh, good evening, Bruce and Philip. Good yeah, evening, hi. Yes, Frank. <laughs> um, it's nice to hear your voices, gentlemen, and thank you so much for taking my call. Good. Um, I thought I'd call through this evening and raise um, an interesting topic um, to you both, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, have you sort of, during your lifetime, been in a situation where perhaps you've reached a plateau or perhaps, you know, you want to change the status quo of your life or maybe even still um, a new change has come into your life and how did you actually go about embracing it? Um, you know, sometimes you just get to that point where you honestly just don't feel it anymore and realise that something's just not meant to be. And, well, if um, feel what anymore? Well, let's just say, Bruce, maybe, say, a career. Um, oh, I see, yes. I'll give you my example, if yeah, you like. Yeah, OK. Um, as you gentlemen are aware, I mean, you know, you've certainly travelled with me for a significant part of my um, schooling years, you know, what, 10 years now, and I'm so privileged to have you in my life. Um, since graduating my accounting degree, I made the transition to be a graduate accountant. Um, but that firm, after about six months, I won't mention any names or anything, um, had to pack their bags and go abroad. Um, so whilst I was studying my accounting degree, all I've ever been doing is contact centre, call centre, you know, call after call. Mm. So since then, Bruce and Phil, I then thought, OK, um, I tried to go into another accounting role. You know, the standard response, sorry, we need two to five years' experience. So back to the call centre, Frank goes. Um, and only about maybe the last few weeks, um, I've just realised that my call centre expiry date has definitely hit. Um, and I've just 
packed up my bags and said that's it for me in that area. Um, I am still keen, of course, not taking that accounting you know, out of perspective because, of course, you spend so long studying in that area. Um, but yeah, I've just, um, I just couldn't do it anymore. I mean, I was more in an advisory capacity speaking to people in relation to their superannuation and retirement options, but it just got to a point, gentlemen, where you know, you're an active listener and, and you'll even know when you're talk, dealing with callers. I mean, of course, you know, the entertainment industry is a lot more enjoyable, of course, but you, you just sort of lose your voice. I mean, I, people didn't give you an opportunity to even explain anything. You know, people yell at you all day long. Oh, and, of course, you know, that might be an exaggeration. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who um, are working in the contacts and industry and um, really enjoying it and um, have some delightful calls. And I, I've had that, but... Yeah, I've just, and unfortunately on an emotional level, I've just, and, and you know, I'm not too ashamed to admit it, but I just, sort of looking at a career change, I, I just sort of couldn't handle it after a couple of weeks um, recently. Well, that's not going to do you any harm because you can always, you can always fall back on that, uh, on the financial ad advice and, and, and be, be, that can be part of, of your mm. curriculum, you know? Yeah, life is always a challenge, isn't it, uh, Frank, you know, and there are hurdles to overcome. You know, in this, in this game, you can come along and you can be riding high and you can be reading news on television or doing a radio program and mm. suddenly that's slapped from under you and you think, well, uh, how can I use what I've been doing to further my career? And yeah, something comes yeah. along, it really does. It's very true. And, um, you know, and when you do something for so long um, and you go out mm. to try something different, you almost feel like, well, where do I start kind mm. of thing? You oh, know, it's going to be mm. so strange, Bruce, yeah, and still um, just taking off a headset and not even having to have a headset mm. and not being connected to a computer, mm. dealing with galls all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sort of thinking, I almost feel like the headset's a part of me. Yeah, of <laughs> hey, hey, Frank, why don't I become a full-time chef? Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you sort of sit in restaurants and you sort of look into what happens into that kitchen, and I don't know how they do it. I personally like to sort of spread that cooking skill through family and friends and, of course, mm. baking some things for you, gentlemen. Um, but as a career, I mean, I admire them, um, that's for sure. I'm mm. still keeping an eye out if they, potentially that accounting industry opens up and they say, you know what, doesn't matter if you don't have the three to five years experience, we're looking at graduates. Um, that's ex until then, that's you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, you just got to keep persistent. Um, but I'd be v I'm very glad to just finally say I think I've gotten out of the call centre industry. Um, well, that might be a, a, a good escape. You know, get that out of your system a little bit. Uh, keep the keep the qualifications that you've learnt, um, but have a break. That's not going to do you any harm. You're young enough to do that. It could be a blessing in disguise, Frank. Good luck to you, Frank. Any time you mm. feel like calling, uh, feel free. A year from now, you realise it was all for the best. Uh, Helen and Dan, hello, Helen. Hi, Bruce and Phil. Lovely program. Thank you, Just Helen. I'd like to say that your topic on gardens tonight has evoked a huge amount of memories in me. Going back to Ireland with my grandfather working the garden for crops and food and yes. stuff, then we playing in it. It was like a magic garden. Yes. So looking at my father do a similar thing, my husband do something similar. See, my grandchildren now play in the garden, daisy chain you know, looking for worms, making little nests for the worms and stuff, and the magic around it. And even when I'm at my most homesick here, to sit in the garden sometimes really connects me to home, realizing the same sky and stars and sun shines on all of us. That's and beautiful. we don't need to have money. We don't need to be rich. No, beautifully um, put. Yeah, the memories that it evokes in that and... The fact uh, on a day when I feel I need to connect with nature, to just sit outside, see the rain on the leaves, the sun on the flowers, all those things, and know that my children and grandchildren are safe in that back garden. Yeah, exactly. That's a, glori so, a glorious picture that you painted. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just... It's a bit like a snapshot of my life going back over the years. Yeah. A snowdrop coming through the ground with frost and ice on it. And, you know, the magic of it, the stars. Mm, you're, very, you're very poetical. But all Helen. started by Grandpa. Hmm. Hey, pardon? Your grandfather started. My grandfather back in County Tipperary. Yes, in the day, yes. He had an acre of ground and he used every bit of it to... Hmm 
to be beneficial to the family. Yes. Yeah. There was plum trees, there was apple trees, there was he grew hay at a certain season. Beautiful. Potatoes and it was just magical. So it really tonight's program has just been I was just listening to you and thought, thank you for that. The memories are lovely. Oh mm. sweet. That's a beautiful call, Helen. And and we have to remember too most people have a family dog and they deserve space too. They, they certainly do, and our dog now lives with our grandchildren. He defected. Oh, OK. <laughs> Good on him. Uh, we're going to give you a pancake parlour voucher for you to take your, uh, perhaps your grandchildren along. Oh, a, that's gorgeous. A real treat at the pancake parlour, open 24 hours. Yeah, they're in uh, Doncaster, Melbourne East and High Point. They're lovely. And, of course, they're all over Melbourne, but those three are open 24 hours a day. Helen? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we're going to give you a pancake parlour voucher for you to take your, uh, perhaps your grandchildren along. Oh, uh, that's gorgeous. A real treat at the pancake parlour, open 24 hours. Yeah, they're in uh, Doncaster, Melbourne East and High Point. They're lovely. And, of course, they're all over Melbourne, but those three are open 24 hours a day. Helen? Thank you very much. So and thank you for the programme lo tonight. A lovely call there, harking yeah. back to the Emerald Isle. And uh, don't hang up, Helen. Hold on now. That's very colourful. Lovely call. Yes. Lovely call. And we we're saluting backyards yeah. now that perhaps the precious backyards may be uh, a thing of the past. That's right. Helen, you are waxing lyrical. Max, good evening. Oh, Mark, good evening. Uh, g'day, Phil and uh, Bruce. How are you? Yeah, what's on your mind, Mark? Uh, well, look, um, I'm just going to give you uh, an interesting... Uh, uh, I'm in charge of a, a large retail group of uh, businesses and um, it's about the long weekend. Now, the long weekend in Melbourne, uh, well, it's not official, but uh, it, it spans from Friday night up until probably Tuesday night uh, with people. Now, our business over this weekend uh, matches the Easter weekend, it matches Christmas, of the people that are out and about and wondering and uh, and out there buying. Now, my business is involved in, obviously, retail and tourism, and uh, our, the business over this weekend has doubled and what it normally would do. It's an interesting factor that uh, it's not official, but so many people must take uh, a day off, and that's the Monday, and obviously uh, Tuesday, uh, most people would take off as well. But, uh, gee... It's a fantastic weekend from our retailing point of view. What is the line you're in? OK, we, we're involved. Um, my business is, I've called it a couple of times in the past, and my business is called the Mill Markets, and we own markets that are throughout Victoria. It's the biggest type of business in Australia. Uh, we've got 500 or so storeholders within our market um, enterprises, and... Uh, yeah, look, uh, the retail side of it this weekend and last year and the year before, the Melbourne Cup weekend is one of our busiest times. Now, it's quite interesting because it's not regarded as uh, a long weekend, but it matches, if not exceeds, uh, the traditional weekends, which are the Easter weekend, the um, uh, Queen's birthday, uh, etc. But uh, this weekend always matches, if not exceeds, uh, and it gives you an indication that most people are working to have a have that long weekend off, and uh, it's not official, but uh, certainly it must it must be there because our figures double over this weekend than what they normally would. Yeah. And my and my business is basically around around the. Uh, Tourism? Yes, as you've uh, said, yeah. yeah. But what are the markets? Are they uh, art and craft or...? Yeah, we've got arts and crafts. We've got brand-new furniture. We've got brand-new fashions. We've got retro fashions. We've got cafes. Mm. Like at all our venues. Uh, and we're a destination for people that want to get away for the day and, yeah. uh, and visit our businesses. And, 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 Mark, do you find a lot of your business is from interstate and overseas? Mm. Oh, we, well, most of them interstate. Uh, but we advertise heavily throughout um, uh, Asia with uh, our advertising. We've got, um, at any of the airports that you go to, we've got full pages of our markets in there, and our, our Asian clientele is quite is quite large, and um, they love going to these sort of places. But that's what they're used to over there. Well, isn't that amazing that the, uh, that, uh, the, the, the Melbourne Cup yes. can generate so much uh, interest in the, in the markets? Yeah, good for you, Mark. 
That's wonderful. Long may it continue. Another Melbourne Cup fact here. Uh, the first Cup was watched by 4,000 people. At the time, Melbourne's population was 140,000. Yes. And Farlap's heart was 6.2 kilograms. The average horse's heart weighs 3.2 kilograms. Yes, what a big boy he was. He certainly was. Um, 26 to midnight, uh, Bernard, good evening. Gentlemen, good, e good uh, evening. Oh, uh, welcome, Bernard. Uh, you're gr I was going to say that Gail Waterhouse is the daughter of Tommy Smith. Yes. But somebody beat me to it. That's true, yes. Thanks for that. Yes. And another thing, uh, you're talking about, uh, Think Big. Hmm. Think Big was owned by the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tunku uh, Abdul Rahman. Oh, Tunku Abdul Rahman, yes. Mm. And also a Chinese gentleman. I've forgotten his name. Mm. Yeah. I, I met them. They came to my cousin's place. Yeah. And my cousin's wife's birthday and Tunku Abdul Rahman's birthday the same day. Oh. But Tunku said, but you were not born in 1902. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful man, Tunku Abdul Rahman. Yes, he was oh, yes. very well loved, wasn't he? That's right. He was. Yes. And, I, and the Queen loved him very much, too. Yes. When yes. he goes to England for the Commonwealth uh, mm. Conference, That's right. she, she, he sits next to her, you know? Yes. Tunku Abdul Rahman is a well-respected man, very beautiful man he was. I think all the Malaysian uh, Prime Ministers have been popular, haven't they? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Another thing I want to say... Uh, my gosh, I've forgotten. Um, uh -huh. Something about the Melbourne Cup, perhaps? Y yes, you know, I want to say something about Melbourne, Melbourne Cup. Uh, the Japanese horse, what's the name of the uh, Japanese horse going to win? Oh, the, the one that I am favouring uh, is right. called Fame Game. That's right, that's the one going to win. Uh, well, I believe so. Most of the tipsters are also going for Fame Game. Mm. Okay, so I suggest you do likewise, perhaps. Are you going to put right. money on it, uh, Bernard? No, I haven't, I haven't battered anything. This, uh, this year I'm a bit quiet, you know. Okay. It's horse number three, fame game. That's right. Uh, okay. Uh, the That's trainer is be. Zach Perton, but the trainer is Y. Munakata. Hmm. Mm. Yes, and all the best. Uh, you were talking about the poor and the rich earlier. Some people are poor, some people are rich. rich. Uh -huh. So I've got a few, two lines for a song. Many a tear has to fall, but it's all in a game. Yes. Many a heart has to break in this old-fashioned way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I hope that that's uh, perhaps uh, an omen for the, the Melbourne Cup well, tomorrow. Well, let me and tell you about them. Fair Game. Can you believe it's won over 3,400 metres? It's one of the best choices for tomorrow. Why? Well, according to all the pundits. And what's your thoughts? Well, uh, I'm going to put uh, 50 cents on the game, absolutely. Are you? Off to the TAB first thing in the morning. Goodness, oh, yeah, then you've got one near you, is it? Uh, yeah, but you're more involved, aren't you, if you've you? got a bet going. Oh, good. Are there any office sweeps that you know of? No. Uh, nine degrees overnight, Tuesday's weather, partly cloudy, sunny breaks, a top of 22 degrees. So it sounds a good day. Uh, be a lovely afternoon, I hope. Oaks Day, rain and stormy is the forecast. Yeah, sadly, 24. Mm. Now, the race has been postponed twice because of rain. Oh, tell me. 1870 and 1916. Okay. And what Australian sporting event did Russia win in 1946? What Australian sporting event did Russia win in 1946? The answer is the Melbourne Cup. Russia oh. was a horse. And it won by three lengths. Yes. Now, tell me, was the Melbourne Cup ever postponed or cancelled because of the war? Perhaps oh, not. Oh, yeah. I, According to you, it's only been I, I can't twice. be. I, I can't be sure about it, but I think it was. Oh, OK. I think, I think sporting events like uh, the Grand Final, oh. uh, because they use the MCG as, uh, as a barracks. Yes. As, uh, for American service. For mate. American service. They did. Okay, Carmen, Tony, Julia, coming up in a moment. Prizes too at 22 to Health. 19 to midnight as we catch up with Carmen and Baronia. Good evening, Bruce and Phil. Hello, what's your story, Carmen? Thank you for taking the call. I Good. would just like to, con to congratulate Frank for his updates that he gives us. Uh -huh. He's been a long time caller. Yes, he has. <laughs> and it's just, just good to hear that he's, you know, getting on there with his. He's um, 
employment. Yes, it is. And I'm sure the right job will come along, but he's probably done himself, you know, a, a favour by getting out. It obviously, you know, was getting to him. I think you're right. The call centre and um, just good luck to me. You feel like you've known him, you know, yes. sort of grown up with the program. From a little boy, yes. Yeah, it was just lovely to... Um, to hear how he's going, but yeah. he'll be right. Yeah, of course he will. He'll be right. Thank you. Very clever boy. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Carmen, have you got a dog? No, no. Have you got a friend who's got a dog? Um, unfortunately, oh. my um, my daughter's dog is okay. not got long to go. Went and saw Oddball tonight. Oh, <laughs> that's a wonderful film. <laughs> it, it was. Wonderful yeah, film. It was really, really good. All right, so, Carmen, thanks thank so much. You. We've Bye. got a Kong Jumbler to give away for, uh, for those dogs that have uh, a long afternoon in the backyard. They'll never be born uh, again. Tony at Richmond, are you there, Tony? I think he's yes, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, Tony. Um, I just want to say I'm an employer and I'm an accountant. I just want to um, tell the gentleman that was on before, the reason why we have difficulty um, employing graduates is the fact that the ter tertiary education system doesn't allow us to because it doesn't teach the practical things uh, in the accounting profession. So it's difficult to employ um, when graduates aren't really learning the, the, the real practical stuff that they need mm -hmm. to operate in the real world. Right. right, okay. Give us an example, perhaps, Tony. Disappointing that, um, that uh, a graduate coming out of university doesn't know how to apply for an ABN number for, for a client. Yeah. Disappointing to know that uh, the, they wouldn't know the differences between uh, company structures partnerships uh, and a sole trader mm. and, I, and I don't blame the graduates I blame the uh, church education system that uh, that needs to be looked at quite seriously because a lot of graduates uh, are coming out of accounting that just can't get a job mm. where they demand uh, you know a, a serious salary and just we as an employer we just can't afford it yes mm. yeah it's right. uh, tragic isn't it Oh, right. well, that's it's, your uh, your side of the story, yeah. and thanks for uh, for adding that. It's very limiting for apprentices very and graduates. So. Have you got a dog, Tony? No, no, oh, right. not having much luck, are we? We'll find somebody with a dog. Maybe <laughs> Julia's got a dog. Hello, Julia. I've got two cats. <laughs> oh, what a shame! <laughs> I rang up. I was going to say you're talking about the um, uh, the land. Um, you know, how um, having, uh, say, the quarter acre. Yeah. Has, uh, well, we worked hard for ours, and uh, my children all grown up, and we have all family get-togethers here, and um, they all come here. And, and we, my husband and I were talking about, well, you know, one day we're going to sell. Mm -hmm. And they just looked at us in shock and dismay and said, oh. you will never sell this house. You oh. will never send, sell because we will never get it again. And I said, okay, if we don't, you know, one day sell it because we have to look after ourselves yeah, of course they're not looking at the future no they're, they're thinking well you know what they see and they want to hold on to it and so I, we're saying but we've got to look after ourselves so if okay we keep it who, who gets it yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. You'd, have, you'd have to divide it up amongst the four of you or five you know and, yeah. and the children and everything I said so the best thing would be to sell but never ever would I want a unit or apartment oh no I mean, it's just it's it's just um, mm. terrible to think about, you know. We all the get-togethers that we have here, and tomorrow they're coming again. Uh, I just couldn't bear it. No, I couldn't bear of to course see all not. that happen. So uh, hold on to it as as long as you as long as you can, Julia. Yeah, that's the secret. Okay, uh, Ruth at South Melbourne. Hello, Ruth. I, yeah. I just want I just want to call. I didn't hear all of that guy who rang up disappointed not being able to find work in accounting was he an accounting graduate wasn't yes he? yes it's true yes well, thank you my, my partner was an auditor and accountant and i worked for him for 20 years and we often had and i'm not blaming the tertiary system but we often had people who were prepared to work for nothing just to get experience but we wouldn't exploit anyone like that no and certainly I'm sorry, even someone out of Harvard Business School, you don't expect them to know absolutely everything. Exactly. And it's part of, their, part of their thing is to learn. And surely you've got to have enough, even in a mentoring capacity, to be able to help someone like that. I would suggest for that young man 
to ring up a number of smaller firms mm. because the problems with accountancy is with a small guy, his business is usually too much work for one yeah. but not enough work for two. That's right. Now, ring, him up and ring them up and find out when their tax deadline work, work is. That's when they need help. Mm. Ring yeah, up, yeah, very good, good Ring advice. up then, be, you know, before the company returns are done, before the private returns are done, mm. and just say, I just want to get hands-on experience good advice. at, at mm. that. Very and good. they will jump on it. Very They'll say, good. OK, come in for half a day, let's see how it goes. I'll very come in and good. just prepare your normal form and we'll take it from there. Good idea. You can, you can learn something, don't be discouraged. Your education right. is always valuable. Got, Once you've got it, no one can take gotta it. Gotta move on, Ruth. You, have you got a dog? No, but have a great day tomorrow. Have you got Bye. a dog? I don't, but I have sit for a friend with a dog. Okay, let's give you a Kong jumbler, Phil, a ball and football version of a toy that will keep that dog occupied. Yeah, choose from a ball. For your, or fri for your friend right through the afternoon. Yeah, the interior tennis ball on loud squeak and tice play while the handles make pick-up and shaking easy with your Kong. It'll occupy the dog all day long, the Kong jumbler. Hold on, Ruth. Take control. Archer, the leggy bay, walking all the way to Melbourne for just one day. One day when sinews strain and nostrils show bright red. For a week, horse never won our cup. No, not on this fabulous Tuesday. From over the sea came a legend called Carbine. Such Tasman trips are now a familiar story, but our cup was barely three decades old when Carbine blessed it with his glory. Lumping ten stone up that Flemington Strait, and the crowd roars, for here's another hero to fate on this fabulous Tuesday. as Pike clicks him away. <laughs> no jock ever earned his money so easily on this fabulous Tuesday. It's going to Peter Pan, I'll win it. Peter Pan, I'll win it. Peter Pan wins. They're off. The start of the Melbourne Cup of 1937 has begun. The Trump is finishing like a shot out of a gun. And the Trump... Oh, Rowley first. My guy second. And third place. And in the runner of both rising fast. Peter to win the Melbourne Cup by two lengths of hell. I don't think Tully's got the ball as Jack. Tuesdays. Drought and depression, good times and bad, we traipse to Flemington and the nation holds its breath while we wonder at the gameness of light fingers or at bolters like Piping Lane, champions like Galilee or the gritty Del Rey. For they were all touched by immortality on this fabulous Tuesday. Just as this fabulous Tuesday is about to dawn, a last look at the weather on, uh, on Cup Eve. Partly cloudy tomorrow, sunny breaks, a low of 9 degrees, a top of 22 tomorrow. So fine and sunny skies for the Melbourne Cup tomorrow.
And so we leave you. Be very careful tomorrow. Don't, don't put everything on us. Just a little bit of a dabble, a little bit of a... Don't you think, Phil? Yes. Come You've on, only got... Mic on. Excuse me? <laughs> You've only got one chance in 26 mm. after all, haven't you? That's right. Yes, and you could blow the lot. Or 24, Pat. The house, the whole lot. Yeah. Wife, children. Yeah, just whole. 50 cents each way, I reckon. So just be very careful. Mm. The sun will come up tomorrow, best of all, and And Andrew McLaren will be along with uh, with Simon and uh, Owens. Yes, I to see the s To see the sun come up on a brand new day. Good night, Samuel. Carter and Amelia and Emily. Charlotte, Sweet Ella Grace, Little William Oliver and Sophia Grace. I'm Bruce Mansfield. And I'm Philip thanking Bianca. And thank you, Bianca. Thank you, uh, Andrew, who'll be after midnight with uh, well, a, big, uh, a big day, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. Well, cup fever has gripped the overnight program here at this station. Uh, have you seen Simon? He's wearing jockey silks. I know. With a, I love that big L on the back of the... Uh, That's right. <laughs> on his uh, jockey <laughs> No, it's on his back, I thought. But I, yeah. I didn't like the way he was whipping you. I thought that was uncalled for. Well, you know, Simon, there's but always... But that does happen, doesn't it, overnight? Uh, whippings? Yeah, oh, they're, yes. they're, they're riding up and down the corridors. <laughs> yes, many occasion, uh, Mark Pectivick and I would uh, play oh, jockey no. and horse. Oh, it were good no. days. Good. Anyway, uh, Simon... Yeah, your tip, please, for the uh, uh, who, who shot the barman? What is it, um... You tell me. Uh, it's, oh, come on. It's a, 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 a kinky, kooky title. Oh, it's the barman. Anyway, it's a horse with... There's only one horse in the race with the barman in its name. By the way, you did very well out of the 3DB top uh, 10 last night. Oh, from... 19, well, 1965 was a gorgeous oh, year for me. I didn't know one of them. You oh, were come very on. good. You couldn't identify Sonny and Sher. That was about it, yes. Oh, what, by the way, very smart jacket, Bruce. I don't think I've seen you in that before. It's I think old, that's from 1965, it too. It is, yes. It's the old houndstooth, originally worn by... Uh, 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 Maury Callard. Yes, Maury Callard. That's right. <laughs> Painting the clouds with sunshine. <laughs> All right, Andy. Thanks, guys. Oh, good. Andrew, that's uh, us for tonight. Phil, we're back with a very special... Uh, Cup program tomorrow. Yeah, Cup Night Show. It'll be one out of oh, the box. Oh, will it ever? Yes, I'm going home to do some prep. So what? Uh, what's mine? Uh, uh, Paris. Uh, Paris. A France? trip to Paris for you. And mine is horse number three, Fame Game. And that's the way she went today.